Praise the Lord. Lord bless you. Welcome to Wednesday night family Bible study. We are on part three of biblical praying. Uh, part three being prayer is a priority. Part one was prayer is a lifestyle. Part two was prayer is a process. And part three is prayer is a priority. Two scriptures tonight. And, uh, and then we'll just kind of take a look at the second one. First scripture is found in Luke 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus speaking and teaching, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then our main uh, scripture this evening that we'll be studying, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort you, therefore, Paul writes, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Praise God. We're going to take a look at these two scriptures tonight. Several years ago, uh, because of all the tornadoes in the area, a developer in Tulsa, Oklahoma, offered an optional tornado safe room in the new homes that he was building and selling. Nine of the first ten buyers opted to pay the extra $2,500 for the room, which could also be used as a closet, a bathroom, or a vault uh, when not needed for safety. The tenth couple, the developer said, were 75 years old, and they opted for a hot tub instead. Their priorities were different. Their priorities were different. Amen. Prayer is a priority. Amen. Let's take a look at Luke 18, verse 1. He spake a parable unto them. Again, Jesus is teaching that men ought always to pray. We've talked a lot about the always. What does always to pray mean? Uh, but he says in, uh, that men ought always to pray and not faint. That word not faint means turn coward, lose heart, or give up. Now that's according to Thayer's Greek lexicon. If I look in Strong's New Testament, number 1573, it means to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied out, to be exhausted. But what scares me is that first part, to be utterly spiritless. We ought to always to pray and not to be utterly spiritless. Yeah, I just can't... Uh, uh, get away from the story of the ten virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom. You know, they were all sleeping. Five had the oil that they could trim their lamps. Five had run out of oil. That oil is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. I do not want to run out of oil at this time, amen, in prophecy. Amen. Because the Lord is returning any moment. And if he is returning any moment, I need that oil to get out of here. Amen. The scripture indicates that if that spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal body. It's the Holy Ghost in us that changes us into that form that Jesus is now. Praise God. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want to be overflowing of the Holy Ghost. And the way to stay full of the Holy Ghost is prayer. Men ought always to be prayer and not spiritless. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I, I, I want to hang on to this. I'm, I'm going I'm to read Luke 18 and 1 a couple of times a day. I want to remember it. I want to remind myself, praise God, of what's going on. Praise the Lord. We had a, a fellow one time, I was interviewing him for a job as an operator. And he had been a, a, an engineer, a train engineer, a driver on a train. And uh, he, I asked him the question one time, tell me about a time that you were so focused on what you were doing that you missed a small detail. Oh, man, you're not going to ask me that. Yes, I am. And he says, okay. He said, uh, he said uh, I, I was late for work. I drove just as fast as I could to the train yard, the rail yard. I jumped out my truck. I jumped up on that big diesel locomotive. I got in there. We started down the track. He says it wasn't, but about four or five miles later in the middle of nowhere, I ran out of diesel. 
I had not checked the diesel tanks. I said, man, what'd you do about that? How'd you, how'd you make sure you didn't make that same mistake again? He said, my daughter had a pad of little fluorescent pink sticky notes. He said, I grabbed one of them sticky notes and I wrote on it, check the, the fuel. And I taped it right over the fuel gauge. He said, when you got on that locomotive and you walked in that cab, that's the first thing that caught your eye was that pink sticky note. I said, man, that's good. So you know, I need to have some pink sticky notes in my life. I need to have some that have men are always to pray, amen, and not to be spiritless. I need to have some sticky notes in my life that has some scriptures to help remind me that I don't belong to this world. I may have a United States passport, to, but I've got another spiritual passport that tells me that I belong to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's get into our scripture for this evening. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That word exhort means ex strongly urge. Paul is writing. He says, I strongly urge you. I strongly urge you. And he goes on from there. And what does he strongly urge us? He says, first of all, that phrase means before anything else is done. The foremost thing, the main thing, the primary duty of every Christian. First of all, Paul is teaching here that the most important thing of all things that a Christian can do is to pray. Pray. Well, uh, spread the gospel. Look, let me, let me put it to you this way. We're to put prayer first in our lives and keep it there. If prayer is first, then God is first. And if God is first, then victory is assured. Praise God. If we put prayer in our life first, God's going to be first. Why? Because we're praying to God. We're not praying to some dumb idol. We're not praying to wood carvings. We're not praying to rocks and stones. We're not praying to, to, to money. We're praying to God. And if God is in our lives and He's first, then you know what? We're going to tell the gospel. We're going to tell what God has done for us. Praise God. There, there is... It, Brother, Brother Tenney said... The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And Paul is writing and saying the main thing is prayer. Praise God. Did I say it enough or I need to say it again? The main thing is prayer. One more time just for the witness. Paul is teaching that praying is the most important of all things on earth for us to do. Praise God. Praise God. Now I'm going to jump to the end. He says, pray, uh, all those things, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men. Now, 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 before we jump off here, look, th there must be prayers for ourselves in the first place. This is implied. It's implied. Uh, we're we're going to be praying for ourselves. We do pray for ourselves. We do pray for our families. But here is where we sometimes get stuck. We must also pray for all men. For the world of mankind. For those particular persons who need or desire our prayers. They call us up and say, pray for us. Man, they won't come to church. But when death, destruction, or, or, or something occurs in their life, they're calling the church for prayer. You know what? I'm going to pray for you. Because one of these days, when we get to heaven, and all of this earth is crashing around in seven years of great tribulation, there's going to be some golden vials, bowls opened up. And it's the prayers of the saints. And they're going to be spoken back down onto the earth. And they're going to hear the prayers that were prayed for them. Praise God. Some of y'all looking at me like y'all don't believe that. But you missed our revelation study. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we just pray for ourselves. Sometimes we just pray for our families. Sometimes we just pray for our church. We need to pray for all men. Amen. That means men in government. That's why we pray for our leaders. God, give them direction. God, show that. I'm also praying, God, look. Hey, it, 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 we want your will to be done. Now, what is God's will? I'll tell you what God's will is. God's not willing that any should perish, 
but that all men should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. But you know what else His will is? He wants His bride where He is. That's His plan. So I could pray and say, God save our country, knock down all those men that are against you and put up some new ones, but it might be God's will that it's time to go home. That's why we need to pray according to the will of God. This is what I'm praying for, God. Isn't that what Jesus said? You know, Lord, if, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, what's more important is your will be done, not mine. So we may want our loved one to be healed, be cured, be raised up, whatever. We may want that job. We may want uh, this particular blessing. But if we pray, God, what I want more than anything is your will to be done. And then if that person passes or doesn't get well or I don't get that job, I've still got to be thankful because God allowed His will to happen. Now, the world will tell you, oh, what a cop-out. All you're doing is that when your God that doesn't even exist doesn't answer your prayers because He doesn't exist, you're making an excuse for it. No, I'm not. I'm preaching the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We are to pray according to the will of God. And we have so many more testimonies of how God has answered prayer. I'm not, I'm not going to get folks. Remember the sign? The devil wants that sign in front of you so that you can't see, can't remember all that stuff that he did for you in the past. That's why it's important for us to remember and give thanks. Praise God. Pray not just for ourselves or our families or not just for the church, but we've got to pray for all men. Praise God. All men. Now, I want to look at those words in the middle. Praise God. Uh, all these words, uh, when we look at them, supplications, prayers, intercessions, uh, those, those three words, they, they really, they're so closely related, and they basically mean prayer. Prayer. There's some slight differences here uh, due to the amount of emotion or the amount of effort, the amount of perseverance based on the need when you're praying. Right? So I, I, I want you to, to listen, put your, put your brain, your thinking cap on, your spirit open, but, but don't, don't get caught up in, in all this stuff. I'll tell you that when, when we get to the end. I want to look first. I want to look first at supplications because that's the first one on the list. Just remember that Paul is writing and saying, the, first of all, before you do anything, you ought to pray. Supplications. Supplications, making requests of God earnestly. That word earnestly means with sincerity and with perseverance. I'm not giving up. Remember the little woman and the unjust judge. I'm not giving up. Uh, uh, we are to turn to God. We are making requests of God earnestly. We are to turn to God and recognize Him as the supplier of our needs. I am dependent on God. I don't want to depend on myself. I don't want to depend on my brains. I don't want to depend on my money. I want to depend on God. He takes care. He is the supplier of all our needs. This is not a devotional or fellowship type of prayer, but this is praying to God for specific needs. It's praying for our needs. It's praying for the needs of others, our family, our kids. All that stuff. But this, this is not devotion time. This is not fellowship with God time. This is bring your needs to God time. Right? Amen. This is, there, there's a moving of your emotions. There's some feelings that are going on here. You may get teary. You may get happy. You may get solemn. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little more intense than just talking to God. Supplications. And, and generally, it is faith building because... We are demonstrating our dependence on God and our trust in Him. So this is supplication. Bringing our needs earnestly, sincerely, making requests of God. The next word on the list is prayers. Supplications, prayers. I know it seems a little confusing because they all mean prayer, but you'll, you'll see the, the emotions and the effort. So what, what is prayer? Prayer is talking to God as you would talk to your friend with a, a confident boldness. You're just sitting there. I, I like to think of just sitting on these chairs or sitting on the altar. And God comes and sits and puts His arm around me and we just begin to talk. Amen? Praise God. 
This is praying to connect with God. Praying to move into the presence of God. It's an act of reverence. God, I love you. I'm I'm, I'm praising you. I'm worshiping you. I want to have fellowship with you. I know that sounds weird. Maybe you've not experienced just being alone someplace and praying and having God uh, uh, come into the the room with you and you just feel His presence. You may not feel as much. Uh, There there may not be as much emotion. So it, it takes a little more faith when you're just talking with God. We pray with faith. We don't pray with feeling. We pray with faith. And, and, and there's a confidence there because you know God is listening to you. Amen. You know God is there. And, and, and prayer includes a time of self-examination and repentance. This is where it's time to, to, to turn that spotlight, that magnifying glass, that mirror on ourselves and say, look, is everything okay with me? Uh, before I, I, I go into that presence of God uh, I, because I want to make sure everything's okay. It's reverence, devotion, fellowship. Uh, uh, we know that God hears us. This is why during prayer time I like to have my Bible with me because sometimes God will put a scripture right in my brain. Man, I'm going to go see what that scripture is. Uh, and uh, You know you know it's so, what's so interesting? All the time that God's put a, a verse in my brain I, I, I think I can count on one hand how many times it was just me. You know, uh, second cleave, uh, 15 and 47. Oh, no second cleave. That must have been me. You know, or I'll, I'll get Acts 47, verse 2. Well, there is no Acts 47, right? And uh, I don't know how many chapters in every book of the Bible, but I can count on one hand how many times I've missed it. But it's, it's actually been God. Uh, given me a word from His Word in prayer. And what He's given me has been exactly what I need. God can even use a song. Uh, one day, I, one morning early, I'd come up here to prayer, to pray, and uh, I finished up. I was headed for work, got in my truck, and I was saying, God, I just sure wish you'd speak to me. And many of you know one of my favorite songs is, uh, is A Little As Much. And when I turned on that, I had never ever heard that song didn't even know it was in the book till I heard it at a at a conference a youth con- a conference with the assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ I had never heard that song before and uh, so I, you know, let alone on the radio man I turned that radio on that song started playing I'm like okay God thank you little as much if God is in praise God uh, so prayers just spending time talking with God like he is your friend, because he is. Abraham said he's a friend of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, next we'll look at intercessions. Intercessions. This is petitioning God humbly, sincerely, with persistence, and it's usually for somebody else. You can intercede for yourself, but a lot of times it's interceding for someone else. This is a particular prayer for a very particular need, praying for somebody who may be sick with something, praying for somebody who has something going on in their life and you you pray for a particular need and uh, you pray specifically for it. It's the deepest, most intense praying. It is travail. Amen. It is travail. Sometimes it will be physical, emotional. It may involve groaning in the spirit. It may involve, uh, all prayer can involve speaking in tongues, but it may be a lot of, of speaking in tongues while you're praying. Uh, uh, it it, it's, it, it, it uh, generally, it requires consistent living and God's trust in you. Uh, Brother Verbal Bean in his uh, teaching on prayer, he said, you know, God not, tends not to call you to be an intercessor if he can't trust you. He can't trust you to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning when he wakes you up to come pray. Why should you be an intercessor? Amen? If you're not willing to wait on God until the answer breaks, why should God call you to be an intercessor? Uh, I I know I've told this story before, but I'm not going to let it stop me from telling it again. I was was praying and uh, reading, actually, the teaching by Brother Bean on intercessory prayer. I read that, that message about, that note about... God trusted me, and I said, Lord, I, I, I wish that you could trust me to be an intercessor. 
And sure enough, about 2 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up. Actually, I had a dream. In it, I saw Brother Lewis, and he was walking on some ice, and he fell through the ice. And uh, I was there, and I ran over, and I was reaching down into the ice, trying to reach him to, to pull him up out of the water. And, but I couldn't get him. And Sister Tony came over with me on the ice. She reached down, and when we touched, both touched Brother Lewis's hands, he came out of the water, and the dream was over. Man, I jumped up out of bed, and I ran to the spare bedroom, and I began praying. But it was like I, the, my prayer was bouncing off the ceiling. Then the Lord brought that dream back to my mind where Sister Tony helped me. So I went, and, and I, 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 I guardedly tapped her to wake her up realizing I was stepping into the mouth of the lion. And uh, she woke up and I, I just said, Honey, we, we got to pray for Brother Lewis right now. We knelt down by the side of the bed. And I know we didn't pray more than five or ten minutes. And the Lord just popped that word into my head and said, It's done. It's finished. Get up. And I looked at Sister Tony and I said, Honey, the Lord just spoke to me and said, It's done. It's over. Get up. She crawled right back in bed. And, and so I... I got up and uh, I went back into the, the spare bedroom and I kneeled down and I tried to pray again. You know, Lord touched with the Bible. And the Lord just really strongly spoke to me and said, it's done. It's done. So uh, I got up. And, I mean, I stayed up and uh, went on to work. I, and I, I called Brother Lewis. And I said, I said, Brother Lewis, I said, I just had this dream about you. We've been praying and I said, I'm not sure what, what all it means. And he said, I'll call you back in just a few minutes. He called me back. I told him the dream, and he was just bawling. He said, Brother, we're going to do something like that. He said, I was just praying at that time. God, let a man of God pray for you and call me. Praise God. We need God to trust us so we can be intercessors. Because there are our brothers and sisters, missionaries, preachers that need us to pray. Praise God. When I say pray for our missionaries, I, I really mean it. Uh, uh, you know, they uh, haven't been on a couple of fields with them. I can tell you, they need our prayers. They're not living in the lap of luxury, I can tell you that. They may have it nice, but sometimes it's just because of the circumstances that they're in. When you're in a third world country, everything's nice that you get from the state. Amen. So, uh, just pray that God use you as an answer. Christ's consistent living. Consistent living. And, uh, and God's trust. Do I have another one? No. Uh, consistent living and God's trust. I wanted to say that, that uh, this type of prayer, intercessory prayer, uh, a lot of times, generally, it'll yield a quicker answer. It, it, it may not be immediate, but it's going to be quicker. And it, 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 and it is a current type praying. And when we pray it, the answer's coming, and it comes fairly quickly. The last word is not really a word of, of prayer. It's a phrase of thanksgiving. Uh, this is a gratitude as an act of worship. This isn't one of them, oh, hey man, thank you man, appreciate it. No, no, no. This is an act of worship. This is a sacrifice of thanks and praise where I say, Lord, I am taking time out right now of whatever I'm doing to thank you for, for, for Noah being alive. Praise God. You better believe we were sacrificing some prayer and some praise and some thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, you know, that, uh, it's a sacrifice to praise sake. For, for who he is, thanks for who he is, what he's done, and what he's going to do. I want to thank him. I don't want to be just thanking him for everything he does for me. I want to thank him for who he is, the creator, almighty God, my savior. Of course, that, that deals a little bit with what he's done for me. But I want to thank him for what he's done in the past. And I want to thank him for what he's going to do. Remember Brother Cole and his teaching on, on intercessory prayer. Thank God for answered prayer as if it's already happened. Praise God. Uh, I, I want to, there are times when when God only wants thanksgiving. We try to pray, we try to supplicate, we try to intercede, and, and we just can't get there. All God wants us to do is thank Him. Sometimes He just wants to know how thankful we are. Amen. So those are the four words in the middle. 
supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks. But I, I want to I want to just kind of look at this as I didn't know what else to say, so I said how to use First Timothy two and one. <clears throat> Uh, and, and it's the different what I found in my reading and in my study. And uh, one one preacher, Brother Verbal Bean, he said that these supplications, prayers, intercessions, given thanks, were channels of prayer. And so he looked at them as if he, he would try to move in this way. I, I'm, I'm going to start asking for God to answer prayer. And if I'm not hearing from God, then I'm going to move into the role of just praying and. And, and fellowship in God. If I don't feel God moving, then I'm going to move into intercessory prayer. Are there things, people in my life I need to intercede? If I, I'll feel God, then I'm going to go to thanks. And so he looked at it as if as if they were channels of prayer. And that's good. That's good. Brother Chester Wright, a uh, district superintendent in Maryland, he looks at it as types of prayer. Types of prayer. And using our voice, our mind, or our spirit. So what are you talking about? Well, using my voice, I'm praying out loud. Lord, I'm, I'm praying to you. I'm worshiping you. God, I'm asking you to take care of the situation. Or I'm using my mind. You know, we can pray in our mind. We, we think a lot of things going on in our mind. We can pray in our mind as well. So we may be doing a task. I, I tell people all the time, I, I love praying. Well, I love cutting grass because it's so mindless. All I got to do is just keep walking up and down in the same line. Uh, it's so mindless, I can spend time in prayer. And I'm praying in my mind. Sometimes I'm praying with my mouth. Or sometimes we pray with our spirit. And that's where the Holy Ghost prays with us. So Brother Wright sees it as types of prayer. Using voice, mind, or spirit. All right? uh, Adam Clark, uh, a, a prominent theologian in, in, in the past, saw things and, and saw this, this verse and supplication, etc. as elements of prayer. Or the essentials of prayer. This is how you pray. Sometimes it's supplication, sometimes it's it's prayer, sometimes it's intercession, sometimes... So they're all kind of thinking along the same lines. Uh, 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 Brother Andrew Urshan, Andrew D. Urshan says, uh, says that uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 1 is a, a system or the divine order of prayer. So he would pray and ask and then he would pray and just fellowship God and then he would intercede and then he would give thanks. He saw it as an order to prayer, a system of prayer, and brother, and uh, 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 another theologian, E. M. Bounds, saw First Timothy chapter two, verse one, as a reference manual for prayer. You don't know how to pray? Go to First Timothy two and one. Boom, there it is. That's the reference manual. Praise God. So, it's not important that you know whether you're using steps or channels or elements of prayer. It is not important. It's not important that you know if you are in the mode of praying or in the mode of supplications or in the involved in intercessory prayer. That is not important. The important thing is that you pray. Amen. Amen. That you pray. And while you are praying, God can change the way you are praying if you allow the Holy Ghost to pray with you, you will notice a change in your tone. You will notice a change in the forcefulness of your words. You'll notice a difference in your words. Even in speaking in tongues, you'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference in your emotions because you're allowing now the Spirit of God to pray with you, through you, You'll be moving through the different types of prayer as the Holy Ghost leads you to pray, here's the most important part, according to the will of God. The important thing is that you have a life of prayer. A life of prayer. Praise God. It's so critical right now. It's so critical right now. I, I, I was listening to some teaching on prayer this morning and the, the pastor was teaching and he said you know what he said a lot of folks doing a lot of good things in the church but Matthew chapter 7 says many many will come to me in that day and say Lord didn't we do a lot of stuff in your name he said some of them might even have the Holy Ghost 
He said, but I'm going to say to him, I never knew you. He said, he that doeth the will of my Father. Praise God. Hey, the important thing is that you have a prayer life. I'm going to close with this. Uh, there was a, an elderly lady that called her Old Betty. And she was asked the meaning of pray without ceasing. Well, she said, it just means what it says. Pray without ceasing. She said, when I wash my face in the morning, I pray that God, I pray God that many sinners may be washed in the blood of Christ during the day. When I put on my clothes, I pray God to clothe me with Christ and with humility. When I take up the broom, I think of the woman who swept the house looking for the lost piece of silver. And I pray God sweep the world and save lost sinners. When I brush the grate and it begins to brighten up, I pray to the Lord to brighten my soul. And thus Betty went on mentioning the things that gave her an opportunity of approaching God in prayer. She made her whole day without prayer. Praise God. We can too. Prayer is a priority. Prayer. Everybody say that with me. Prayer is a priority. Praise God. Lord bless you tonight.